Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Dragon Network. So, you guys are interested in playing Card of a Vanguard. At least that's what I was able to determine from the response I got on my Bloody Sky video and the, uh, the thumbs up that that one comment got. And frankly, I'm more than happy to do that. So, welcome to How to Vanguard, Episode 1, Getting Started. And what I mean by that is, it's one thing to try and pick up a new TCG, but when you've never actually played it before or don't know what exactly it is, it's a little confusing and sometimes even a bit uh, overwhelming to try and get into. See my case with Magic the Gathering, like half the cards I still don't understand, even though I've had friends explain to me some nuances of Magic, but Vanguard is thankfully much easier to understand. It just takes some time to like get used to it, but it is easy to pick up, but it's by no means easy to master. Like There's a lot of things you actually have to do to get the most out of this game. A lot of complaints that Vanguard gets is its absurd amount of luck, but to be perfectly honest, the luck in this game you can work around and the highest form of luck comes in the form of its trigger mechanic. And to be perfectly honest, you're less likely to get blown out by your opponent trigger sacking you than you are to get blown out by just simply playing Yu-Gi-Oh and losing the die roll. Like, that's the difference between Vanguard sacking and Yu-Gi-Oh sacking. Yu-Gi-Oh sacking is just fucking ridiculous. Vanguard sacking, you know it's coming, so you can play around it. That being said, though, it is an overall less expensive game than Yu-Gi-Oh, although if you want to get the best decks in the game, you are going to shell out a considerable amount of money. I think Shadow Paladins right now are one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive. Well, there's also uh, Dote Kagero's they're also fairly expensive, like if you especially want to max it out. The highest rarity of Dote is going for a hundred plus dollars and you need to play a set of those. And there's also the highest rarity of Dragon of Overlord. And so, yeah, Vanguard can get expensive, but only if you want it to be, and that's if you want to play the absolute best decks. Or you can play decks that are not as expensive, like what I've got here, I've got Narukami. They're fairly inexpensive right now, and they're a good deck to learn how to play the game with as it's just like the game itself. You can pick it up, but it's by no means easy to master. You're, you have to do a lot of work and figure out how to get the most out of this deck. Like, I'm still learning new tricks and ways to play my deck, and I've had it for over a year now. And then when you want a deck that's really challenging to play, you've got OTTs, or specifically the Tsukiyomi, because some decks have ways of allowing you to actually manipulate the cards that you're going to be seeing. It's referred to as legal stacking in this deck allows you to manipulate a whopping 16 cards or so and it's really good if you've got like the, the kind of uh, how do I explain it like if you've got a really sharp memory or you really like uh, basically playing your deck like a puzzle this is definitely something and then you've got more straightforward stuff like Kagero or Gold Paladins and what have you but yeah, that's what the game is, and basically what you do is, it's just like any other TCG. Two decks go at it until one person loses. The loser in this case is when you take a total of six damage, which we'll show over here. So, when you have six cards in the damage zone, you lose the game, and we're at five. So yeah, you hit six damage, you lose. Or if you run out of cards in your deck and you can't draw, you lose. Thankfully, Vanguard does not have a mill mechanic like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh and Magic, so you don't have to worry about facing that guy who's playing Durant or Empty Jar. No. Vanguard, at least, most of the time you're going to be winning through damage. Very rarely will you ever see a situation where someone decks out. I don't think I've ever actually had that come up before, and it's been over a year since I started playing. So now that we got that information on Vanguard itself, the question is, how do you get started in this? Well, there's a couple ways to go about it. One, and probably one of the easiest things to do, is to actually watch the anime. It may sound weird to recommend an anime based on a card game, given how notorious Yu-Gi-Oh has been for, well, not following its own rules in the first couple of seasons. Like, how many times did you see someone summon a monster and phase up defense position because they thought you could do it because Yu-Gi did it? Well. Vanguard was actually made with the intention of following its rules to the dime. Everything that you can do in the anime is every, something that you can do in the actual card game. The other reason why the Vanguard anime is recommended is because the main character, Aichi Sendo, actually starts off the game 
just like anyone else is picking it up. A complete novice who doesn't know absolutely jack shit about it. Well, the other main character, Kai Toshiki, who's uh, someone who's well established in the game and has played it for a long time, i.e. any one of your locals players who's played the game for a good amount of time, actually goes out of his way to teach him how to play the game. Much like how anyone at your locals would do, because that's one thing about the Vanguard community I've noticed is there are very nice, close-knit group of people. It's a lot like the friendliness of the Pokemon community, but with some of Yu-Gi-Oh's more competitive nature. Vanguard players are more than happy to help out people get into the game, as we want to get as many people playing this as possible. And that's basically what the first season of Vanguard does. Well, at least the first ten episodes of it is... As this character learns how to play the game, you, the viewer, are to pick up on that and realize, oh, well, you can do this. But at the same time, when he makes a mistake, he calls himself out on it, or he gets called out on it, and you're supposed to realize, oh, well, maybe I should not have burned all my defensive cards as early as possible. Maybe I should have actually tried to hold on to them until they were absolutely needed, and such forth. And I find it to be really neat. The anime does this again for the second season, in case... People may have for, uh, left the game and decided to get back in because they like the new gold paladin strategy or what have you. Then it spends the first episode teaching you how to play the game because one of the players is like, Oh, I don't know how to play Vanguard. Can you help me? And he's like, Aichi then goes, Oh, sure. And blah, 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 blah. So there is that. And it's actually got a decent storyline. Unlike Yu-Gi-Oh, there isn't very much of the fantasy magic stuff, so no Shadow Realms and whatnot. Although, you could argue the Psyqualia stuff is kind of like that, but aside from that, though, it's more realistic than card fight animes usually are, so, yeah, you've got stuff like your locals, your regionals, your nationals, and, yeah, I think the first season revolves around Nats, and then the second season revolves going to Worlds or something like that, so it's really neat for that. So, there's that one way. The second way I briefly touched upon that is asking your friends, like, if, they, if there is a Vanguard Locals in your area, you should definitely consider asking the people there, I want to play this game, could you guys give me a hand? And they'll more than be willing to help you do that. They'll probably, like, lend you a deck to play around with, get an idea, oh, I like this idea, I like this idea, I'll try and go for this. They might even help you get some cards, and they'll just help you learn the game. And the other way you can pick this uh, is, this actually goes hand in hand with going to locals, and that is picking up a trial deck. This is the exact same as Yu-Gi-Oh's structure decks, and you get 50 cards, whoops, got them upside down, so you get 50 cards, you get a playmat, and you get a rule book in here. Here's the playmat. I won't take it out of his packaging just yet, but I can, oh, maybe I can without doing too much damage, but yeah, you get this playmat. I believe they showed this in my unboxing the Narakami theme deck, but yeah, you get this playmat, and the mat actually tells you how you go about your turn phases and blah 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 blah. And you also get a quick guide on how to play the game, it's like a starter guide here. And you also get a rule book in here, and the rule book is actually pretty good. It explains a lot of things, how to play the game, win conditions. It also has a lexicon of, I mean, a glossary of all the things that are on the cards because. If you pick up a Vanguard card and you don't know anything about the game, you'll be like, what the hell does this mean, this, and all this crap? Well, that's where the playbook comes in. Although, I am going to try and do my best to explain how the images are on the card in another video, but, yeah, this is your trial deck. It comes with one high rarity card and one, just one rare card. This is a, a rare card in Vanguard, and this is a... Is this a double rare? Yeah, that's a double rare. So this would be the equivalent of a super rare in Vanguard. And then there's a secret... Yeah, there's an ultra rare and then a secret rare. And then there's going to be a new rarity coming out next year called secret rare, which is weird, but... And the trial deck is a good way to get started. They usually have multiple sets to support it. Like, my Narukami theme deck, for instance, has support from BT6, BT8, and BT9. And then it's going to be getting support in BT 10, 11, 12. So, Oracle Think Tank has had support since the very first couple of sets. Uh, the Tsukiyomi line comes from BT 03. And it also has a starter deck that just came out recently. If I can find actually the boss monster that far. Because my OTT deck is terrible. Oh, I mean Oracle Think Tank, by the way. Yeah. So, I got a trial deck to help support this. Look through it. I have most of the cards I already needed. 
but a trial deck will usually give you like the basics, I mean, your vanillas, your mini effect monsters, your triggers. So a trial deck is definitely one good way to get started on it. There's always one or two trial decks released at a time every now and then. Uh, we just got one released for the Aqua Force archetype, and there's going to be two new theme decks coming out for the Gold Paladin and Narakami archetype, the Liberators and Eradicators, respectively. If you definitely want to pick up and get get into the game, those are two decks to highly look out for because Eradicators and Liberators are two very good decks in Japan. We just don't have them yet. And I think that's really all I can say on how to get started into the game. So just for a quick recap, if you're interested in Card Fight Vanguard, aside from watching these video series, aka How to Vanguard, you can also watch the anime, ask your people for help at your locals, or you can even do it the crazy way like I tried to do and pick up a trial deck and learn the game through the rule book and watching some other people play a couple games and understand stuff. So. And that concludes episode one of How to Vanguard. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Tell me what specific topics you would like me to cover at some point, because I do have a couple things in mind that I want to do, but I am open to suggestions on what kind of videos I can make for this series. Until next time, people, this is Obelisk TGS, Jack.